right. Hello, everyone, and welcome on in. Uh, we're going to get started in just a moment. I'm going to let uh, the last few folks trickle in uh, before we kick it off here. Um, panelists, how are we doing today? Everyone doing good? Great. Yeah? Doing great. Excited to be Fantastic. here. Fantastic. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. We're excited to have you. Let's see. I'm oh, getting, some, getting some people. Yep. There we go. All right. Awesome. Well, I think uh, we're ready to get going here. Um, I want to welcome you all to the second day of Jackrabbit Connect live panels. Uh, today, we're going to be covering the staff experience, where we'll uh, discuss how Jackrabbit users are connecting their subscriptions with integration partners to level up their staff's experience and create a game-changing culture at their program. Uh, my name is Mason. I am the content marketer here at Jackrabbit. I'm part of our marketing team. And today, I'm joined by our panelists, who I'll introduce now. Uh, today we have Carolyn Wells of Dance by Design Studios uh, out of New Braunfels, Texas. Uh, Kate Watson of Davina's Swim House in Toronto, Ontario. And finally, we have Rhett Ware of South Shore Gymnastics Academy in Rockland, Massachusetts. Uh, and I want to take a second to thank each of our panelists for joining us today. We really do appreciate you being here with us, and I know our audience does as well. Uh, and a quick note to you, the audience, uh, we will have a dedicated section for Q&A at the end uh, of our questions. But if you have any questions along the way, you can go ahead and drop them in the chat. We have some wonderful moderators that will be happy to help. And uh, if it fits, we'll go ahead and try to work it in uh, as well. So without further ado, I think it's time to get into it here. I'm going to bring this back to us here. Sorry, I've already had somebody need something from me. I'll be right back. <laughs> no, you're totally fine. <laughs> it's the middle of the week. It's busy. I didn't laugh. Um, <laughs> we'll get it started. <laughs> All right. Um, so you know what? Since uh, she had to step away for a second, why don't we start with um, a basic one? I just want to know how uh, you found Jackrabbit and how you decided it was the best software for your business. And whoever wants to go first, Rhett, I know you're, did you, did you yep, guess that one? I, I caught the tail end, yes. The question. Sure, yeah. Uh, if you would just want to run us through how you found Jackrabbit, how you decided it was the one for, for your business. Sure, uh, it, it's not really that um, exciting of a story. I got fired from another job on June 4th. I opened my gym on September 4th. And Jackrabbit was the first company out of the three or four I reached out to that called me back. So you guys were the winner. <laughs> I will yeah. take that. We try to be we try to be prompt with that kind of thing. Um, Kate, how about you? Um, when I started with Davina's six, seven years ago, we were using a program called Camp Brain, uh, which doesn't work in the aquatic world. Um, so looking at what we had available in Canada, what was comparable and compatible with everything that is Canadian, Jackrabbit was one of the only options that made that, that met our needs, that was useful, designed for aquatics. So it made things very simple. Awesome. Well, glad to hear we could help there. And Carolyn, we'll circle around to you. Um, so I, um, opened nine years ago and I don't remember much because I was pregnant at the time with my first baby and it all kind of like just happened at the same time. But I remember that I did compare um, and I was very thankful for Jackrabbit because I signed the lease on my space with a three day old. So it was a big, big event and um, don't regret that decision at all as much as we grow. Oh my goodness. Well, glad to hear. Very glad to hear. That sounds, I, I can only imagine. Very stressful time. Um, well, great. Let's get into, um, let's get into the, the meat and potatoes of it. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about sort of the staff portal and engagement. First, I want to sort of focus on how that applies to you and your staff. So how would you say the staff portal has kept your staff kind of engaged? Do they are they more involved in your studios because of it? Um, or is it, or is it mainly you in there? 
Well, I can answer that. I, my staff, I feel like this is how this generation functions, right? Everything is online um, it, and they just, they, that's what they know, you know? So we use it for pretty much everything. We use it for them to clock in, clock out. Um, we use it to take attendance. We use it um, pretty much, and it's very, it was a very easy transition. Um, and it's, it, it's very user friendly, which I like too. And honestly, before we went to have everybody clock in and using, we use Express Payroll, so it integrates with Jackrabbit. Um, we did a paper and pencil type of payroll kind of thing, timesheet. Now it takes me like a normal payroll takes me maybe 10 minutes and I have 22 staff. So, wow. yeah. That's yeah. fantastic. Um, uh, Kate, I see you're on mute. Yeah. Uh, so we have yeah. about 150 to 170 staff. And so wow. we use it in a variety of ways. So um, the aquatic staff use it to know the classes that they're teaching, who their swimmers are, their levels, and to track all of the skills. Um, management uses it for to track aquatic staff hours. Um, and we also use the skills and certifications to track all of the aquatic certifications for that. Um, and then my customer service reps and maintenance and outdoor pool staff all use it to track their own time um, and to communicate any problems or find replacements as necessary. So we have it used in a variety of ways across the board for everything. Um, and one of the great features that we have is in the time tracking that you can um, block time like if they're working a three to seven shift doing different jobs that they just can quickly modify it for the different pay rates. And I use it also to track hours and gross wages. So like I'm able to track all of my staff hours that way. Fantastic. You were, you were making the most of it over there. Yep. Wow. And how, how many staff did you say you had? 120? About 150 to 170. Yeah, that's crazy. yeah. Wow. Amazing. Uh, Carolyn, how about you? Um, I'm going to preface this, this somehow. I'm not hearing what Kate is saying, so um, I might not be able to tack on to her. Um, but oh, we, we sure. once again, exactly what Brett was saying, though, but like our, um, we have a lot of generations um, in our staff and everybody uses it. Um, we have iPads in each studio um, that have the staff portal on there, but we actually, part of our onboarding process is they receive the link and cause most of them have it on their phones. And um, and so then, the, and I even go through like how to make it, you know, we have like where they can just download it to their home screen. So it's easy to access. Um, we use it for clock in, clock out. We use it to take attendance and we utilize makeups. So it's really great um, uh, when the makeup just pops up right there um, for the attendance. And when you're teaching two-year-olds, it's especially nice because there's a picture with the name because the two-year-old is not gonna tell you their name. Um, so we absolutely love um, that feature. We also um, utilize the class resources. And so um, it's really great when we can access, we use Google folders for all of our classes or we'll put like the costume photo and that's how um, we can remind the kids when we haven't gotten yet or when we want to share it with them. Um, we just pop it up on the iPad and we view resources and then it, it's right there for them. Or if like we want to review and show everybody the um, recital choreography, view resources, it's right there with their um, class folder as well. So it's really awesome. And um, so yeah, we... Love the staff portal. Another thing we do sometimes is I loved the timed message that you can do. So if there's something that we need our staff to know just for a certain time, or like we use it a lot for recital costume measurements, if somebody mismeasuring, we're like, it pops up and it's timely. It keeps reminding them um, that like so-and-so is joining on Zoom that day or please measure them. And then we can put that it automatically expires, which I love so that they're not, we're not just continually building on, or it's a message from three months ago. So we really like that feature as well. Well, very glad to hear. Uh, now, on all of you kind of mentioned like ease of use, 
um, and that your staffs are using it for clock in, clock out. So there's like a certain amount of accountability there uh, on their individual parts. Do you think sort of, is, is that faster, is that easier for them than you know, methods before? Were they clocking in? Were they doing it by pen and paper? Were they doing it on a different system? Um, if anyone wants to chime in, just curious about that. Is it, or have, has that just been, it, has it just been Jackrabbit? Well, we used to do, we oh, used to do pencil and paper. There. And like I said, I'd have to literally try to add up everybody's, you know, three minutes here, six minutes here. Um, I also like that, like, if they do forget to clock in, they can write me a little note. Um, and we use the notes feature. Mm -hmm. If the coaches are at competitions, they'll say, I went to this meet. I was there for three sessions. Um, and we, in Massachusetts, we have to pay drive time too. And, uh, I had three hours of driving. So that's, we use the notes feature for that. And then I just go in and kind of plug it in. Um, when I do payroll. So it's just, it's so, so easy. Um, I like that the kids show up for makeups as well. We haven't used the pictures, but I think that's a great idea. Um, because like I said, the, you ask the kid their name and they have no idea. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I don't even remember what we used before, but it really does make it so easy. And um, our teachers make different pay and our different departments and stuff and it's a great way for me to track just on number side too and we definitely use utilize the notes um like if they're working for a private and so they can write in the note who specifically they're having a private with and we have that as well or if they're like late to clock in and they need to adjust it or forget to clock out and they need to adjust it i love the notes feature because it makes it so easy um, and i love that we can access that you know for for a long time that's really good too. Absolutely. Oh, I think it I think it went back on mute there, Kate. So sorry. Too quick on the finger. <laughs> uh, yes, we use the note features. It's great for us tracking absences for our staff even and like who covered them off. So the pairing. Um, and that it is always there that we can go back and double check that um, we use the time feature in a variety of ways. So like my customer service and maintenance and outdoor manually input their own hours where management will put in the aquatic staff's hours. Um, but then the sign off process is really easy. Also that we have the checks and balances so staff can enter their hours, management approves it, and then I will be able to exported out into our pay payroll company. Great. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, okay. Um, so, okay, well, I wanna uh, drill a little bit deeper. Um, because of this, do you think this, the efficiency, the benefits of all this, do you think that, do you think the parents feel that? Um, is it reflected in any way to them? I mean, I think, I think yes. I mean, I, I think again, this generation can sign up online like that. You know, I like looking and seeing, um, you know, I wake up on us in the morning and, you know, we have a thousand dollars worth of registrations. Like that's great for us too. Um, so I think parents are expecting it. They're expecting the ease of it. Like we have, we have the new app too, um, and that's made things a lot easier. Um, and we we get no negative feedback as far as our online registration, and we get very few questions. A few, you know, very few people that can't figure it out. Um, but I I think it's them compared to Jack Rabbit. Yeah. <laughs> we do try to make it make it pretty user friendly so that you're using the Jackrabbit plus. We are, mobile app. yeah, Jackrabbit plus. And my office manager, okay. like she's super good with Jackrabbit. So she, you know, she's, she can use all the bells and whistles and all that stuff too. Okay. Are, uh, Carolyn and Kate, are either of you also using the, the plus mobile app? We use the app for sure. And we've used it for 
a long time and um, we still are not utilizing it to its fullest um, aspect, but I love it, especially because um, I would say that's the way of the majority of our families um, register for classes, like re-registration um, happens on the app and we Zoom every single dance class. And so um, that's how they're watching it on Zoom is through their app. And once again, those resources, we use the resources like crazy for like, like I said, linking to their Google class folder that houses everything, their costumes, um, a bunch of different ways. And so they access that through the app. The worst place we are not utilizing it is push notifications. And that is number one on our communications list this year. You got a plan though. That's what's important. Um, we, we do have the app um, and the plugin. Uh, we're not we're still playing with it to work it out. The push notifications is just being rolled out this summer. Uh, so we're looking forward to the possible usage of that with communicating with our parents. Uh, but no, we're not maximizing the use of the app at this moment. Okay. It sounds like you're making some use of it mm -hmm. though. So we're, we're glad we can, we can help out there. Um, well, great. Yeah, that's those. That's my main uh, kind of interest in the the staff and um, our, our portal and app there. Um, and I do kind of want to keep us moving along to um, sort of like the substitutes and availability features within Jackrabbit. Um, I guess I'd like to start it. Uh, Kate, I think you mentioned that you you were using the availability features um, pretty pretty regularly. Um, but for everyone else, um, and, and you as well, Kate, is that, is that the way you are tracking availability for your staff or are, is there still kind of pen and paper in the mix or have you fully transitioned to that? There's still a lot of pen and paper in the mix. Yeah. Okay. We're still working on the, the easiest way to make it streamline. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Little analog and digital. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Us too. Like a still pen and paper. Um, as far as the availability and um, sorry, um, availability, and also I the my next week's job is to look at the subbing feature and see how that works because that's definitely at the top of my to do list right now is figure out this time off subbing thing this you know it's mm -hmm. always mm -hmm. always a challenge oh. you'll you'll see but take it from me it's going to change the game Good. a little bit i haven't had a chance uh, to look at it really, really closely yet feature. awesome yeah and you let us know if you have any questions along the we'll way do. um we Carolyn? don't really use it yet i think um partially probably because we have like a smaller staff um so it's not as needed we mm -hmm. use um uh, Slack is our communications tool. So it's my teacher's responsibility to find, like we have a whole like step-by-step -step process for them to find a sub and same thing for our admin team. Um, but we do have the portal settings to where like they can, you know, they can um, see the class list for the day. So if they're not the normal teacher, they can pull up the attendance. Um, we're pretty lucky. We really don't have anybody outside of our staff um, who subs. Um, so they're already set up in Jackrabbit and can see all of that and clock in and clock out and make a note that they are a sub that day and who they are subbing for and what classes. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely interested in learning more. And I want to say another thing that we are going to plan on utilizing in the staff portal this year is skills. Um, we're looking forward to using that because okay. we haven't used that as well. The skills tracking is a very, very cool feature. Um, yeah, I, Kate, I see you nodding. Are, do you do y'all utilize the the skills tracking? Yes, we utilize it. It's our staff's responsibility to make sure their swimmers are um, listed with the right levels, and they're use, using it to put in the when they've completed each of the skills. 
Um, so our staff are fully responsible and on that, and it has saved a lot of time going using that feature instead of having management afterwards manually go and add in what levels uh, a swimmer has completed. Right. Okay. We have not, we haven't used the skills feature before. Um, my staff loves their pencil and paper evaluations. <laughs> um, so, uh, but but it is on our list that we try that it, we'd like to get to to see if they will if they'll buy into it um i don't think like with our classes mm -hmm. we do as much skill tracking kind of thing as at the end of the year we do like a nice little note like a handwritten note to the parents um and it's just a paper and we you know we give it to the kids like a little report card um and they seem to enjoy that as well so That's great. I really like how y'all are utilizing um, the aspects you need and then keeping that personal touch for, for certain things, kind of cutting and pasting there. Um, great. Yeah. Uh, I guess we're going to go ahead and move right along to the next section I want to touch on here. Um, and once again, Kate, I do think you mentioned this, but I wanted to see how uh, Jackrabbit's integrated payroll processing uh, options like Express Payroll or QuickBooks um, has improved efficiency, uh, accuracy, uh, just how that's been helpful for you. Um, well, we integrate into another program, Deluxe, uh, so the download okay. and the upload. So once everything is correct in the system and like we, the time has been verified and it's under the right category for was it a swim instructor, was it maintenance, was it... Um, lifeguarding or customer service once we know all the different categories it's really easy just to quickly down hit the download button make my quick modifications and upload it right into our deluxe pay provider and then i'm just double checking and things are are good the hardest part is my staff remembering to tell me that they've brought us a, a, staff has returned, they've activated in Jackrabbit and I just need to activate them in Deluxe. That's always my bump in the road. For sure. Not the biggest one yeah. though, that's not too bad. Um, Carolyn, are you utilizing any of the, uh, the payroll features? Um, I mean, we do the clock in and clock out and we close the payroll and do all that kind of fun stuff, but um, we handle our payroll through QuickBooks just because it aligns with like everything else that we need it to do with. So, and I'm still like to be a little bit more hands-on when it comes to some certain aspects. So QuickBooks will have a little bit more power to do that. Yeah, totally fair. And Rhett, or what about y'all? Uh, we use Express Payroll, so when they clock in, clock okay. out, I kind of like they're talking about like I go in, I check everybody's entries just to make sure it's correct or they didn't leave me any notes or anything I need to change. Um, and it doesn't take very long at all. Um, and then from there, I just mm -hmm. close it out and send it right to Express Payroll. They send it back to me like a couple days later for me to double check again and then everything gets run. So it's pretty seamless. Nice. Yeah. We believe it or not, we use Express yeah. Payroll too at Jackrabbit. And it's at least on the receiving end, things it goes. Yeah, and Sean's my account um, too, so we... that makes everything really easy. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Um, before we get too far off, it looks like Martha had a question, and I think I, I know the context on this one. She said, do you pay them for the time it takes them to do all of that? And I, I believe that's um, Rhett, in reference to the, the writing out of the, the skill tracking that you mentioned. Um, yes, they do, um, get, they do get paid for that time. It doesn't take very long. It's like a one page thing that they do. And you know, most of my people that have like a ton of classes are full time, so they have the hours put into their schedule anyway. But yeah, we would definitely pay people for asking them to come into work. Awesome. Thanks for the question there, Martha. 
so, okay, we've talked about the payroll, we talked about the staff, um, but I want to know a little bit more about the process on how they would get there. So uh, I want to move to staff contracts. Um, and my question is, as part of your hiring process, do you conduct background checks on prospective employees? And if so, have you taken advantage of the uh, integration we have with Yardstick for background checks? And we, anyone who has. <laughs> I'll go. Uh, we don't use Yardsticks, but we do do the background check because we have to run ours through the state of Massachusetts. Um, we run it okay. through their whatever system they have in place. And then also they do um, all my staff for USA Gymnastics members as well. So they get a background check through through that as well. For sure. Kate, what about you? We do background checks, um, mm -hmm. but Yard, because this is Canada, we have to go through each municipality that our staff person resides in. So each region is different on the process. Uh, so unfortunately, we can't use Yardstick. Okay, good to know. And Carolyn, what about you? Um, Yardstick is actually my number one for on my art on my August plans is to um, get that going before our new season begins. Awesome. I love how y'all have plans. You, you're ready. You, you know what's coming up next. Um, let me see here. Oh, OK. I had, I had one more on that note. Uh, do you so you, you've hired the person. Uh, or you're in the process of hiring uh, the person, do you upload their their signed contracts and policies uh, into the resources section for reference in Jackrabbit? Okay. Uh, Kate? We, yes, we use the resource section in, immensely. Uh, normally, when we're doing the interview process, we will create the Jackrabbit profile for them. So we have them set up and we'll have them listed as a candidate. Uh, so that way I know who I have to still track for anything. And then yes, we upload any of their signed off policies, procedures, um, all of their certifications because Ontario requires all of our staff to have a fair amount. Uh, we track all of them using um, your certification for the staff uh, and all of that gets tracked right into it. And so as they're onboarding, we are populating both resource, um, the notes, resources, certifications and skills. Awesome. Uh, Carolyn, Rhett, are y'all you, are you utilizing the resources? I didn't even there? know that was a a thing. So I'm definitely going to look into that. Um, I'm a, I'm a pretty pencil and paper kind of gal because that's how my brain works. So we keep uh, mm -hmm. just like a, a folder, like an employee, like paper and pencil folder right now. Um, I have like a little checklist to make sure I get all my documentation back. Um, but I'm definitely going to look into um, using the resources because I think that's a great idea. Awesome. Yeah, we, we're all learning a little bit <laughs> about each other on this one. Yeah, we don't use it yet, but um, I always say like Jackrabbit is so robust and there's so much to learn. I always love doing all the trainings because I always learn something new, like the staff resources. Awesome. Well, uh, I think with that, I want to thank you all for answering all of my questions. You've been very gracious. <laughs> um, but I want to go ahead and turn it over to our viewers and our audience. Um, so audience, if you have any questions for our panelists um, or our moderators or me, we can uh, answer them now. So feel free to drop them into the chat and we'll see what we can do for you. Uh, looks like we have one from Maisha. Where is that? Uh, Maisha, if you want to, can you give a little more context on that one? We might have missed uh, exactly what that one is in reference to. 
I just wanted to say for like new people for Jackrabbit, like sometimes I see like on the Facebook, like all their questions that they have, the way it worked really well for us is we bit off pieces at a time. Like we first learned Jackrabbit, then we learned how to do the emails, then we learned how to do this, and then we learned how to do the, the, uh, you know, using the, the staff portal. So I think it's important that people realize that because it's so broad, robust and there's so many things that you can do on it, like taking it in, in little chunks, I find is much easier than trying to do everything all at the same time. That's good advice. That's good advice in general. <laughs> uh let's see here maisha i will uh if one of our moderators could drop a link to possibly the help center so we can help uh maisha here find the um the the staff resource section uh that would be much appreciated uh here's one from lauren how do you support the adoption of the staff tools if the staff aren't using them as requested is that something that's come up with uh, any of your teams yet? I'll answer this one. Yes, there's actually a report that you can pull to show who has been on, how frequently they've been on it, and when they were last on it. And um, this is a great report to pull, especially when you're starting to make, um, starting to adapt the portal or the skills or what, what you need from them. Um, and then you can start singling them out and sitting down and having them with their phone and walk them through the process so that they have it, they know that they have it. Um, and we've even run into a couple of our staff who don't have phones. So helping them set it up and showing them how to do it on a laptop or a computer. Uh, so that way then they're not falling behind. Okay. I really like that. Sort of it could just be they don't understand it. A little, a uh, little help for them. Um, now, Carolyn, I know you. You said you couldn't hear Kate, um, but the same question I will throw over to you. Um, has that happened yet? Have you kind of had someone uh, in your on your team who hasn't really adopted the the kind of processes? Um, not necessarily, like for what we've done so far. But I think for other things that we've had. Um, we find that raffle drawings and money, like even just like 20 bucks and in, are great incentivizers. And so um, we might have like a monthly contest or try to figure out some way where you can just do like a small little gift card or um, money surprise to like incentivize them to hop on board and do what they need to do. But definitely, I mean, I'm assuming what Kay was saying was like training and um, even like partnering them up with someone who is really awesome at it and loves it. And so it's not only you necessarily showing them how awesome it is and how great it is. It's like another person who's using it as well. Awesome. Okay. It looks like we've got one in from Ashley here uh, to Kate. Um, what is the report that you were referring to that you can check staff usage of the portal? If you, it's um, staff portal log under reports in staff. Uh, and that way you can then see who has been on it. You can re uh, bounce around using it. Um, and uh, what other report? Uh, search user activity report and that will also help you find who's using it and who's not using it and i will drop that uh help soon. oh those moderators like i said fantastic beat me to it there okay well, you know, I uh, I might do a last call here for any questions from our audience. Give you a, a minute or so to send them on in. Um, I would like to take this opportunity though, though to thank all of our panelists again for joining us. This has been fantastic. This has been insightful. Um, so I really appreciate all of you being here with us today, making the time. Okay. I know it is the middle of the week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Well, um, I wanted to go on what Rhett was talking about. We have a lot of our, even our teachers do admin stuff. We do um, like feedback for uh, evaluations of recommendations for our students and we do it through Google form and we pay them. But once again, they're clucking in and they're clucking out on Jackrabbit and it's under the admin department because they get paid differently when they're admin versus teaching. So I hope all three of you are available to be moderators on the next one because you have this down. You've got all the details ready. <laughs> I just I want to add one thing that we've done to make sure people are using the clock in and clock out is we have Kindles and they're in the gym. So they come, they put their stuff down. If they have to go to the bathroom, they do their thing. Then when they go in before they start teaching, um, having those actually in the gym um, has been really helpful. They don't use their, I don't let them use their phones or anything like that. I don't even, I think that some of them have figured out that they can use their phones, but we do ask them to clock in and out um, in the, the, the gym on our gym Kindles. So it just has become a habit. I definitely have the people that forget, like my same people that forget, you know, over and over. And, um, you know, there was time where someone just kept forgetting. And so I just told her I was going to try to remember when her shift started and ended and you know it ended up maybe she was there till seven but she was scheduled till seven and but she was really there till seven ten but she only got paid till seven so she started remembering after that a couple times <laughs> yes getting getting paid properly right. is usually like we said a little little yeah. incentive uh in the mix there um, that's also a very good idea because out of sight, out of mind, if it's right there in front of you. You're, right. You're it's the same to, Kindle that they clock and... in, that they take attendance on, you know, that type of thing. So I, I find that that has helped a lot, having it actually in the gym where they have to go to teach their class. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, Dylan, I'm going to uh, throw that one to our moderators there on the uh, topic of the geolocation. Um, they should be able to provide some help link for you there. Um, but if that is it for our panelists, uh, I'm going to uh, wrap it up here. Let me go ahead and share my screen one more time with you all. There we go. Okay. Uh, so next steps uh, to our audience, go ahead and feel free to join our Facebook user group. There are people just like you who have may have already had the same question. Um, and if not, a lot of people can help you figure it out. Um, we have product coaches. Always feel free to reach out to us. Um, I think it was at the beginning, but it was mentioned. But we do try to be prompt. We do try to get back to you all as quick as we can. Um, so feel free to reach out and we will help you with any problems you're having. Uh, and finally, uh, check our help center. Uh, if you're not finding anything on the Facebook user group and you, you know, if you just want to do a little research, I'm that way. I like to see if I can figure it out myself first. Uh, our help center is a fantastic resource. Uh, you can just search a keyword and nine times out of 10, um, you will, you'll find what you need. Uh, so that is that is it for our live panel today. Uh, I want to thank our audience again. Thank you all for registering. Thank you for being here. Uh, if you're regis registered for this panel, you are also registered for the final panel tomorrow. So be sure to uh, come visit us one last time. Um, and a third and final thank you to our panelists. We really do appreciate you being here. I know our audience does as well. Um, and I think that is going to be it for us today. So thank you all so much. Um, and we will see you again soon. Thank you. Have okay. a great day. Have a great week.